Dr. Christian Schrock, and I'm a physician in uh, internal medicine and have a subspecialty in infectious disease, which I've practiced for 40 years. I have developed a lipidology practice specializing in lipoprotein A and have established a nonprofit foundation, which is the Lipoprotein A Center and Research Institution, a 501c3 public charity. I'm passionate about this because of my son's near death due to this problem. My son, Eric, 41, was a skier and played tennis and was in very good shape. He also had had a executive physical at Google where he is a senior computer engineer. His lipids were perfectly normal, everything checked out, there were no risk factors identified for heart problem or coronary artery disease. Uh, my son was wise enough to Google some strange back pain that he had noticed and he found that he may have angina. I was called and I said, it's a serious matter and you should go to the emergency room. What was uh, shocking was that he had 100% blockage, 95% blockage, and 60% blockage of the LAD. He went on to have three stents placed, uh, was transferred to a more tertiary care center, and then the story began as to what was the diagnosis. None of the cardiologists on the East Coast, including uh, preventive cardiologists, could make the diagnosis. I took him to the Mayo Clinic, where I said to them, it has to almost be an inherited problem since he has to have collateral since he has survived. I was uh, persistent in saying, there's got to be something going on that's unusual. And I did mention that my brother-in-law had angina at a young age and had stents also. The Mayo Clinic, the doctors there, did not make the diagnosis. Um, apparently, they were not aware of lipoprotein A, which was uh, an eye-opener for me. The family finally sent off an extended panel, IQ Cardio, with Quest Laboratories. And that test, lipoprotein A, had been added by a Dr. Fran Peterson, who has become my colleague and is also on the foundation board. So he added a test that cost essentially $15 for them to add, and Eric was found to have a five times normal lipoprotein A. And it turned out in our family that all 16 out of 16 tested in three generations all had a similar phenotype with three to six times normal lipoprotein A, and that seemed as a unique problem. However, intellectually, of course, you extend that to other families, and I think there are tens of thousands of Eric's who may have potentially a fatal heart attack out there, and also many, many families, and up to 20% of the population is affected by elevation of this particular, uh, what I like to call now, ugly lipoprotein. we found that apheresis, which is used commonly in Germany, is the treatment that is most established. Only one out of 50 physicians has ever heard of it in this country. In the entire United States, there were only 31 people receiving apheresis for lipoprotein A. The German group has done a great job in observational studies and recently in a study that when People had not been diagnosed for two years. The rate of heart attack was, and MACE events was determined. And after apheresis for lipoprotein A was started on a weekly basis, their rate of MACE and heart attack dropped up to nine to tenfold. We also knew that PCSK9 inhibitors were starting to be demonstrated as certainly lowering uh, lipoprotein A and having the potential effect. There is good evidence that statins do not work for this special situation. In fact, some recent meta-analysis study shows that it actually perhaps causes harm in people that have a higher than 50 milligram per deciliter level of lipoprotein A. A drug has emerged now that is shown in several studies, including the Fourier sub-analysis and the Odyssey sub-analysis, to have not only the effect of lowering 
the level of the lipoprotein A, but robust clinical results with reduction of hazard ratios. Therefore, we added within a month after the apheresis PCSK9 inhibitor that he administers to himself three days after the apheresis, and then the apheresis in this country is fortnightly. But the addition of the PCSK9 inhibitor really kept his levels initially down to 17 milligram per deciliter, and then at the highest, 77 milligrams per deciliter, when without the PCSK9 inhibitor, it would go back up to his 150 milligrams per deciliter. What I think short-term should be done is that there should be institution of almost mandatory testing for lipoprotein A. This result does not show up within the normal lipid panel, which measures, of course, as you know, triglycerides, HDL, and total cholesterol, and the LDL calculated by the Friedenwall equation, which probably is antiquated at the present time, contains lipoprotein A cholesterol, which can be calculated approximately by dividing the milligram per deciliter mass of lipoprotein by three, gives you how much cholesterol of the lipoprotein A is within that LDL. So the first thing to do is get testing done and have it done with all lipid panels. Now is the time to do something about this problem. You can share the link below with a friend or colleague. Help introduce apheresis into the United States. Inform your colleagues as to the fact that this has to be treated in special ways. Inform them that PCSK9 inhibitors are starting to show results. And really your time, expertise, and money will be of great help to our foundation. And we would appreciate any donation to help with this effort. And I think we are going to save a lot of lives by being proactive and helping with the science in this area. Thank you so much for your time today and listening to this important information.